I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how I edited this portrait inside of Photoshop from start to finish. So once I open this portrait inside of Photoshop, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate my background layer by pressing on Command J or Control J and just crop this image 4 by 5 to fit for Instagram. So I'll pick my crop tool, come to ratio, make sure 4 by 5 is selected and just crop it the way I want to fit for Instagram. All right, so like this works for me. Before I hit OK, I'll make sure my content aware is selected because this background is a play background, it's not that complicated. But if it's a complicated background, you can use the generative expand. But since this is just a play backdrop, I'm going to use content RFA and hit OK. Now after I come to the image over 5, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean this backdrop. You can see the backdrop is looking rough. Now to clean this backdrop, I'm going to pick my remove tool and just first of all, remove the obvious place and just use AI to clean it after. So I'll pick my remove tool and just remove the obvious place I need to clean. Like this part right here, the scratches, just to remove them. Okay. Remove these parts, so remove these parts, which are very obvious. Remove these parts. Also, remove these parts right here and just hit OK. All right, so successfully remove those. Let's see the before and after. So, this is the before and the after. So much better the before and the after. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the retouch of me clean backdrop to clean the backdrop even more instead of doing it manually. So I'll come to my filter, I'll come to retouch on me and just click on clean backdrop right here. So as soon as you load, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see. Just take a look at the image. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. The before and the after. So let's see the before and after. This is the before and the after. We are still going to clean the backdrop even more later in this video. But next thing I'm going to do, I just want to remove the blemishes on this image right now. So to remove the blemishes, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on command option shift A or control shift alternate A and just come to my filter, come to retouch on me and just click on heal right here. So instead of moving the blemishes manually, with the retouch on me heal, I can do it automatically using AI. All right, so let's just wait for it to load. So as soon as it's loading, if I zoom in right now, just take a look at the blemishes, you can see they are no longer there. So see the before and the after, the before and the after. And you can play with the sensitivity if you don't want to remove all the blemishes on your image. So you can take it to 100 if you want to remove all the blemishes. So you can just play with the slider and see what works for you. So 100% works for me. I'm going to click on apply. So we we'll successfully remove the blemishes from this image. So see the before and the after. And if there's any blemishes still remaining, we are going to do it manually. All right. So after removing the blemishes, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do dodge and burn for this image. So to do the dodge and burn, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer again by pressing on command option shift A. After creating a stamp visible layer, I'm just rename this layer so you can follow along. This first one right here is background cleanup. So background cleanup. This second one is heal, which is to remove blemishes. Why this last one we created is dodge and burn. Dodge and burn. All right, so you can follow along. I normally don't rename my layer or organize my layer. I just know. But for the sake of this video, I'm just organize it so you can follow along. So this new layer we created, I want to use it to do my micro dodge and burn. To do my micro dodge and burn, I'm going to come to filter. I'm going to come to retouch on me and I'm going to click on dodge and burn right here. Now, instead of manually doing my micro dodge and burn, with the retouch on me dodge and burn, it's just going to do it for me automatically. All right, so just wait for it to process all right as it's processing let me just zoom in so you can see the before and the after take a look at the image see the before and the after the before and the after if you want to add more dodge and burn you can just come to this blend and just take it up and to add more dodge and burn so this is the before and the after but i feel it's okay too much so i'm going to take the blend down a little bit let's use 100 so 100 works for me or 110 also from the warmth you can add warmth to the place you dodge and burn or you can remove warmth from it so i'm going to add a little warmth like this so also, make sure stuff slightly is selected and just click on apply. Once you click on apply, you can see the map of the micro dodge and burn where it dodge and where it's burn for us. So from here, come to your blend mode, change from normal to soft light to bring back the original color on your image. So, still before micro dodge and burn, after micro dodge and burn, before and after. So let me just go everything we did with the retouch on me so you can see the before and after retouch on me. So, this is before retouch on me and after retouch on me. Before it touch on me and after it touch on me. Amazing, right? And if you want this to touch on me, I'll believe the link where I get it in short below of this video. And if you use that link, you're going to get 20% off any purchase you make. And if you want to get it, I'll advise you get the dodge bone and the heel first and try it out. And if you like it, you can get the background clean up and any other one you feel you need. And also, I only advise you get the touch on me if you're making money off photographing and retouching because it's quite expressive. I'll always tell you that. All right. So next I'm going to do, I'm going to create a stamp symbol here again by pressing on command option shift three or Ctrl Shift alternate E 
Once I do that, I'm going to smooth now the skin even more using the Reblum Retouch. Now with the Reblum Retouch, I'm going to come to Filter, click on Reblum, and just click on Reblum Retouch right here. And the Reblum Retouch is for photographers who want minimum edits or minor edits on their image who doesn't want to go overboard with edits. So this is the perfect application for you. So we just have two options. We have the neutral and we have the fashion. And the only slider we have is the general slider, which is to increase the intensity of the dodge and burn. And also the texture slider, which is to reduce the amount of blemishes you want to remove on your image. All right. So it has finished loading. So this is the neutral. Let's see the neutral. See the before and the after. The before and the after. Now let's try the fashion. I'm going to click on fashion. So for the fashion, see the before and the after. Looking so much better. The before and the after. I'm going to click on OK. All right, let me just go back to what I did so far so you can see what we started from everywhere right now. So, see the before and the after. The before and the after. And yes, this is how I retouch all my images. I use the retouch of me and the real blonde retouch to retouch my images. Now, you can see the skin is looking good already. I don't have to do much of focus separation if I want to do focus separation or I don't have to do focus separation. But I need focus separation for this image and I'm going to do focus separation right now. Now, to do focus separation, I'm going to come to my action and just click on focus separation 16 bits. Because this image is 16 bits. If yours is 8 bits, use focus separation 8 bits. I'm going to click on focus separation 16 bits right here. And just use 3 for this image and hit OK. And also, if you want my action, I'll believe in the liquid, I'll get it for free in the general below of this video. All right. So once I play that action, I'll pick my mixer brush tool. Make sure this place right here is on clean brush. Make sure clean brush after each stroke is selected. My weight is not 30. My load is not 30. Mix release doesn't matter. You can use any number right there. My flow is on 20 and sample one layer is selected because I'm working on an empty layer, which is this brush here layer. All right. Now with this brush layer selected, I'm going to hide my high focus texture layer. I'm going to click on it to hide it. And right now you can see I have only the colors on my image. If I turn it back on, you can see the textures are back. If I turn it off, you can see we have just the color. So my Mr. Brush is selected. I'm not going to zoom in on the image. So I'm going to use my square bracket key to increase and decrease my brush size. And I'm going to paint all the highlights separately. Paint on the shadow separately just to smoothen out the transition between the highlights and the shadows, as you can see. So, make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the parts of the image you are working on. So, if I want to work on a bigger portion of the image, I use a big brush. If I want to work on a small portion of the image, I use a small brush. You can see I'm just increasing and decreasing my brush size according to the part of the image I'm working on. And also, I'm brushing my highlights separately and brushing my shadows separately. All right, so let me just zoom in on the face and just paint all these small highlights on the nose separately. As you can see, also paint all this part separately, just like that. Paint on this part separately. Paint on these highlights here separately. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this for the whole of this image. Okay. All right, so let's do before and after. Let's take a look at the image after focus separation. See the before and the after. The before and the after. Looking so much better. Now that's not what to do. I'm just going to blur the background even more. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer. But best now command option shift three. Well control shift alternate E. You just pick my quick selection tool. Once I select my quick selection tool, make sure enhance edge is selected. And also click on this drop that icon and click on cloud right here for a more detailed result. And just click on select subjects. So right now you can see our subject is selected. So I'm going to go to invert the selection and make sure the background is selected. To invert the selection, I'm going to press or command shift I or control shift I and just press or command J to cut out the subject from the background. All right. So I'm going to rename this layer to background, background and rename this layer to subject, subject. All right. Now with the subject layer selected, I'm going to hold command or control and click on this background layer to bring back the selection and invert the selection again by pressing or command shift I. And this time, add the layer mask to hide the subjects from the background. Now, after that, I'm going to select my background layer and just drag it below my subject layer. Then I'm going to blow my background layer. So I come to my filter, a convert to smart filter. Once I convert to smart filter, I come to filter again, click on blow and just click on click on blow and just click on Gaussian blow right here and just blow it the way I want. So let's blow it to about 100, 106 and hit OK. And this works on me, so let me just zoom in so you can see the before and after. So, see the before and the after. But I don't want to affect this notes, so I'm going to add the layer mask. Once I add the layer mask, I'll pick my normal brush tool, switch to a black brush, and just remove that effect from the snoot effect because I don't want it to affect it. So, that this works on me. Okay. 
Now, for me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to manually blur this particular part and just make it look even more smooth. So, I'll add a new layer. Once I add the new layer, I'll pick my mixer brush tool and just zoom in and just manually paint this part right here just to blur it manually. All right. So, I still want to keep the shape of the shadow, but I just want to blur it and just make it look a little bit smoother. Also, I'm going to remove the blur from the hair a little bit just to make it look even more better. Alright, so let's see the before and after with that. See the before and the after. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enhance this smooth effect and make it look even more brighter. So to do that, I'll come to my adjustment layer, click on curves adjustment layer, and just change it to lighter RGB like this. And just take it above the subject layer. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. But I don't want it to affect the whole image. I just want it to affect only this note effect. All right. So I'm going to invert this layer mask by pressing the command I. So invert it, which is to hide it, and just use a white brush and reveal it to only the areas I want to reveal it on. So like this, this part right here. Also, some part of the subject just to reveal it and just make it look even more natural, like so. So see the before and the after. The before. And the after, I think I'm going to remove it from this particular place. Okay, let this work for me. The before and the after. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to use the negative field to add these parts to the smooth effect. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on Command Option Shift E. After creating a stamp visible layer, I come to my selection brush right here and just make a selection of these parts and just add it. I just want to add this part as the smooth effect. All right, remove. Remove this part of the clothes like this and just click on generate here and click on generate. So now we have three variants. This is the first variant, the second variant, and the third variant. So I think the second variant works for me. So I'm going to use it. So let's see the before and after. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. Next, I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn this image to black and white right now. So I'll go to my adjustment layer. Just click on black and white right here. And from here, I'm just going to play with the red. So take the red up a little bit. Also, take the yellow up a little bit, like so. And this works for me. The before and the after. The before and the after. The next thing I'm going to do, I want to make this part of the face look more dark. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on Command Option Shift E. And just come to Filter. Once I come to Filter, I come to Camera Filter. Once I come to Camera Filter, I come to my masking. Just pick on brush right here. Once I pick on brush, I'm not going to zoom in. Once I zoom in, I'm going to paint on where I want to darken. So this part right here are the part I want to darken. All right. So I scroll all the way down, come to exposure, take down the exposure, come to the blacks, take down the blacks like this. So like this works for me. So see the before and the after. I'm going to add these parts like this. All right. So see the before and the after. Also, I'm going to remove where I don't want. I don't want these parts. I still don't want this part right here, so I'm going to remove it and add where I want to add, like so. So just play with the mask and see what works for your image. So this works for me. So the before and the after. And also, I'm going to add contrast to the image and textures. So I come to my adjustment, I come to contrast, add a bit of contrast, scroll the way down, come to textures, add a bit of textures, and hit OK. Now, let's say before and after. Say the before and the after the before and the after now to bring this home i'm going to add digital noise to the image right now to add digital noise i'm going to come to my action and just click on noise right here once i click on noise if i zoom in you can see it's all over the image and it's looking too much so i'm going to take down the opacity of the noise a little bit so take it down to about 30 that works for me all right so see the before and the after the before and the after you can see it just brings the image together now, finally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add that white stroke or that white border around it. So I want to create a stamp visible layer, Command Option Shift E. If you already know, once I create that stamp visible layer, I'll make a selection of your canvas by pressing on Command A or Control A. Then I'll come to my edit, I'll come to my stroke right here. For the stroke, you can use the width between 50 and 100. I usually use between 50 and 100. Also, for the color, you can choose any color you want, but white works for me. For the location, make sure inside is selected, not center, not outside, but inside. Opacity set to 100, mode is set to normal, and just click on OK. 
to add that white border around it. Now from here, to remove the selection, just press your Command D or Control D to deselect, all right? So let me just group everything I did so you can see where we started from and where we are right now, okay? So this is where we started from. This is our body image to Photoshop and this is what we did the before and the after. Now to save this image, I'm going to come to my file, I'll come to my exports, I'll click on save for web legacy. Once it open for me, so for the quality, it usually is between 70 to 80. You can see right now the quality is on 80. Also, optimize is selected, embed color profile is selected, convert to sRGB is selected. And from here, these are all the settings. I just click on save and just save the image the way I want it. All right, so save the before and the after. So this is the step-by-step -step process on how I edited this portrait right here. And if you want to learn how to retouch beauty or headshot pictures, check out this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.